45 marks of the paper are on standards. Now, remember the syllabus as it stands today has approximately 30 accounting standards in it. So some are very small, some are larger. So to get 45 marks of the paper out of 100 on standards is about, is about right, I think. Excuse me. 15 marks of question 2, published accounts, is on standards. <clears throat> Excuse me, 5 marks of question 3 is on standards. And then 15 marks and 10 marks for questions 4 and 5 are entirely on standards and standard setting and that kind of thing. So be prepared to do the standards because, as you can see, if you add these up, a quite astonishing 45% of the paper. Now, I, over the years, I come across students saying to me, uh, especially in recent times when the syllabus has changed, that they've ignored the standards. They've only done the non-standards areas of the syllabus, and they expect to pass. And I say to myself, 50 out of 55. Now, that's difficult to get. That's like prize-winning uh, performance. So I think the more of the standards you prepare, it's a bit like doing the written bits, the easier the chances are of you passing. So try not to ignore the standards. I personally like the standards. A few years ago, ACCA had a paper, a 100-mark paper, exclusively on standards called the Regulatory Framework. <clears throat> and I taught that for about 12 years, I think. So I like the standards personally, and I hope to show you in my class notes and little mnemonics and little uh, pictures and cartoons I do in my notes how to grab your attention, how to understand what the standards say. Now, each of these standards, <clears throat> many of them run to 50 or 60 pages. I tend to cut them down into a manageable size focused only on the exam, F7. So I hope to share all that with you once you come on the course. and be marvelous to be able to help you. What else can I say? How to pass F7? How to pass F7? Everyone wants to know how to pass. Mastering the four basic techniques. And don't forget, as I was saying, the standards are very, very important indeed. Mastering the four techniques and the standards. Consolidating a parent and subsidiary and associate, the subject of question one, of course. Question two is all about published accounts, as I was saying, for a single company with more complex adjustments. I'll be honest with you, the adjustments under group accounts, the really complex ones, that's question one, is usually left for P2, which is known as corporate reporting in, a, in six months, a year's time. But at our level, the consolidation question one adjustments are very simple. But where they do get a little bit complex is question two, where you're dealing with a single company. So you might have to do, deal with leasing, do construction contracts, workings, all within the very long question two. So do be careful of that. Question three, of course, is on, the, or at least the third technique, is preparing a statement of cash flows based on a memorized format and some standard workings. Now, the good news for you is I don't do any T accounts at F7. <clears throat> if you've done, so I don't do any T accounts at F7. If you've done some F3 and you know the T accounts, that's great. Indeed, you might well have studied with me, either through video or um, in the classroom. Now, at F7, of course, the questions are much longer, so you need speed. So I keep away from any T accounts, including no T accounts for cash flow statements. So I'm going to use a technique where I use reasoning rather than T-accounts, a much quicker method where you use logic rather than slavish T-accounts. Remember, the paper is not called accounting practice. Indeed, a few years ago, it used to be called advanced accounting practice. Advanced accounting practice. And the name put students off. Nowadays, of course, it's known as financial reporting. So you don't have to worry about the detailed bookkeeping practice with T-accounts. So I'll show you a very modern method for things like consolidations and published accounts and cash flows where you don't need any T accounts. Of course, the odd time where it's a bit complex, I might do a few debits and credits, but that's just the language of accountancy. 
Those are unavoidable bits. But I do no tea accounts whatsoever. I give you my word now. It's much faster without them. What else? What other skill? Interpreting financial performance, comparing a single com company over several years, or comparing the performance of two companies with a view to advising a potential purchaser, either as an alternative to or separate from cash flows. So what's ha what happens sometimes is because students are beginning to predict for question three, it'll be cash flow this time, or it'll be interpretation this, this time, the examiner is occasionally not allowing you to leave anything out, and so set, he sets a half-and-half half kind of question, half cash flows and half interpretation. So I would suggest make that your fourth technique. The first technique is consolidations. The second technique is published accounts. The third technique is cash flows. And the fourth, of course, ratio analysis. But don't forget, in the midst of all of that sits standards. And as I was saying earlier, if you add up all your standards bits, that's 45% of the exam. So there you are. How to pass this paper. What else do we have? You must ensure that you understand the concepts used in each syllabus area. Be able to adapt techniques studied during the course to individual exam questions. So key words here are understand. As a student, am I demonstrating to the examiner, to the marker, that I understand what I'm doing? Or do I just do it mechanically? Which is why I keep away from T accounts. So if you're released from T accounts, the slavish adherence to some bookkeeping techniques, if you demonstrate to the examiner that you understand what you're doing, immediately he or she is inclined to pass you. The other area, of course, to adapt techniques, I'll show you that, and to practice exam questions in a timed exam envir environment. As I was saying to you, the biggest reason why people pass or fail is timekeeping. When I, when I teach in a live, to a live audience, there's many people who come late for every sitting, uh, for every lecture. And I do feel sad about that. And um, I'm sure these same people overrun in the exam, indeed might even come late to the exam. So timekeeping is very important. It's a, it's a bit of discipline, being professional. It's difficult at times, but you have to be disciplined with timekeeping. Which reminds me, I must move on to the next bit. So, there you are, the various important points about financial reporting.